If you enable yourself more money to start off with, then there are more possibilities of towers that can get an all pops challenge under their belt. And today we're going to be doing this with the infamous tank of Balloons Tower Defense 6 in the form of Churchill. Let's put down our hero and let's begin this adventure. We're going with exactly 2160 money to start off with because that's how much Churchill is to put down in chimps. We won't be able to get the machine gun before black balloon spawns, so we need to rely on the armor piercing shell's ability in order for us to be able to pop black balloons. Another thing we need to look out for is that Churchill will not be able to by default pop camo balloons before round 24. So we're going to need our radar scanner put down as soon as possible. And I think we should just be able to get enough money in order to do so. Right. The only other alternative would be is to put down the engineer early and get the cleansing foam up here so that we can just decarify the balloon. But obviously we can't rely on something like uh, counter espionage because that actually does damage. Put down our village here, gonna get grow blocker and then radar scanner after that. It's pivotal that you don't go with bigger radius, we need the radar scanner up and running. Well, this is looking to be quite an interesting round to say the least, round 19, and yeah, we get for both. Okay, so our first encounter with black balloon. It's gonna put you on strong and put armor piercing shells on. The reason why I went for strong is so that the armor piercing shells always hit the black balloons. And then once all the black balloons are popped, then we can put it back on first and don't need to rely on armor piercing shells for the rest of the round. So, strong. No, we need to put you back on first. And this round is going to take some microing. Put on last first seems to do a little bit of a trick here. So, we can use. Sorry, Churchill's pierced a little bit more there. So it's always going down a straighter line rather than just trying to catch up with the balloons themselves. Another interesting round and we should get through it. No problem whatsoever. So put you back on strong, then put you back on first so that we are able to catch up with these pink balloons because the white balloons move a bit slower. Okay, so radar scanner. Or we could get bigger radius actually beforehand, but... We've now got this with the radar scanner. So, all right, so it's level six, which is when Churchill gets the, um, the camo, well, the ability to buy the bolt target camo balloons. But at level five, we get a machine gun, which means that we no longer need to solely rely on armor piercing shells in order to actually um, pop black balloons. Round 27, not an issue. Churchill has a lot of peers under his treads. Was it under his binoculars? I think we'll go with binoculars rather than trace because, well, <laughs> well, if Churchill would really like to, he would be able to run over all of the balloons with his tank and we won't have to deal with them. He could even pop the bad instantaneously if he ever so choose to desire to do that. But I guess we're stuck with stationary monkeys. I heard that they really like their spots once they choose a spot and it's very difficult for them to come out of it. Unless there's means like helicopters. On round 33, Captain Churchill can by default target camo balloons. And do you know why we don't have Geraldo's and means of support for Churchill? It's because you only have one hero on the field unless you're playing co-op. While machine guns can pop black balloons, it's not the most reliable way of trying to consistently be able to target a particular balloon that you're weak to with one of your attacks. So... We're going to go with MIB next so that we can constantly pop these balloons on the field here. Like, we're going to get Glue Strike and possibly Glue Storm as well. Like, you'll know when you see the thumbnail, but I just want a constant, reliable way of being able to pop all kinds of balloons rather than just, let's say, um, going by an ability like Glue Strike or going with a particular attack like Machine Gun on Black Balloon or explosives on the lead balloons and stuff like that and I, I just hope you get what I'm trying to say here is that I want a consistent way of being able to pop all kinds of balloons regardless of the attack we need to do some microing here what's interesting is that the machine gun is always on first but the shell is the one that follows your targeting priority 
Uh, armor piercing will go with now, actually, since we have the ceramics on the field. And that does us very well there. So we're nearly there with... Okay, we've got MIB now. Now we don't have to worry about a single kind of balloon spawning out and giving us problems when it comes to pierce. Because if you can't pop the balloon because your attack type doesn't pop that particular balloon, it reduces its pierce to zero. And there goes Raygro Balloons. No, thank you. That's no good whatsoever. Let's go with strong armor piercing shells and see what happens. I don't think a huge amount will happen, but yeah, it's Captain Churchill getting those initial pops down, which is so annoying. But we managed to do that round very well. So this is not going to be an issue whatsoever. The first Moab, Captain Churchill has both his machine gun and his cannon in order to deal with this. And... We got through that round with a little bit of trouble there, but we managed to do it in the end here. Captain Churchill will get all the balloons with, obviously, support. You can never do things alone without support. Unless, of course, you're an Ultra Boost 2TC. Then Ultra Boost is all the support that you ever need. In most case scenarios. Some cases, most cases, I prefer being able to pop black, uh, camo balloons, sorry. Let's put our soon-to-be overclock down. Let's put the foam away from the track so you don't accidentally pop any lead balloons. And uh, we should be able to get overclock some point in the near future. Let's get overclock first, and then let's get our glue gunners down. And then we'll go towards the Ultra Boost. Fortified ceramics. Are you an issue? But a lot more ceramics can be an issue though just gonna say that out loud sometimes more is worse than a single target with a huge amount of hp level seven is captain churchill now shells deal more damage and can explode four times instead of three is this going to be enough for round 49, though? That is question. We're going to put you on last, actually, so that your machine gun deals with the first most balloons, and then our shells, right? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Can we do this? We may need armor-piercing shells again. Do not regrow too much. <laughs> I beg of you. Well, we, we must do it. I surprise myself sometimes. It is almost frightening, my genius. Now that we have a huge temporary increase attack rate thanks to the overclock being applied, I think our strategy is mostly complete. I say mostly because we want some glue gunners down, namely two of them. This one's going to be our middle path one, this is going to be our top path one. But regardless of what you think of this scenario, I think we can say that we are... We are in a strong position right about now. I mean, it is logs after all, but... I'm just trying to to prove that it's possible for myself. I'm not saying it's not possible for anybody else. I'm just saying, is it possible for myself? And then go from there. How many other maps can Churchill do an all pops on? Let's go with Glue Strike. Go with Stronger Glue, because I like for it to last longer and for the balloons to move even slower than usual. Do we need to use Glue Strike now? Nope. Do we need to use it on this round? I don't think so. I think we'll use it for, let's say, round 59 with some of the regrows on that round. Uh, it turns out we don't even need it for the regrows because there aren't that many on round 59. It's just when you have a low amount of damage and a low amount of pierce, you have to worry about those regrows. Multiplying by the millions and billions and trillions and the quadrillions. And um, probably at that point, your PC is knackered. I take a one round with regrows, which might be an issue. And you know that round. It begins with a 7, it ends with a 9, it's 79. Here, yeah, round 62, our first encounter with fortified mobs in this round. And we should be able to go through this scenario without a bit of trouble here. Sorry, it was laggy. I was just seeing if my recording settings are still good because earlier. Um, I looked at my settings and realized that there was different sound setting configurations going on, which is never good. It's always good to test your hardware before you do anything. And one thing as a content creator you never ever want to see when, you know, doing a long bit is realizing that your recording software says start recording rather than stop recording. I've had that one too many times, and the horror is unreal. Especially when it's a scenario which is 
incredibly difficult. Like, let's say if I um did the Ultra Boost and Crossbow Master 2TC combination. And then I, when I realized, I'll be like, thank you ever so much for watching everybody and crying. And it's like, crying of happiness. Look at my recording software when I end it. Um, crying of utter sadness. Like, can you just imagine the sheer horror? I, I did it. I've got proof. No, you haven't. Do it again. Give me actual proof. You probably get more out of Homeland Defense than Ultra Boost, but I just love the uh, the idea of getting Ultra Boost in a all pop scenario as a means of support. It's especially more useful if you're going to round 140 and you're doing a 23 Mega Pops or an all pops challenge when you go to 140 because of those stacks, and also the fact that you also want Homeland Defense as well, like. Both of these towers are so pivotal towards a all pops chimp scenario for around 140. And the only one that I haven't done to this date, which is actually possible, is Avatar of Wrath, but I don't want to spend a agonizing amount of time coming up with a strategy. And also the strategy requires support chinook as well to move the Avatar of Wrath about. And it requires to be on end of a road as well, and I'm like yeah, uh, I like you to do it, but I'm not that desperate on doing it. Also, look at the round number. Isn't that a good round? Also, this round doesn't have any Moabs on it, so that's funny. While I was talking, I didn't realize that we've got the Moab Barrage ability, which you don't always want to use. Like, definitely after, like, the 80s, you want to use it. Like, you want to use it against the ZMG, definitely. But, like, after round 80, you're probably going to be using it on most rounds anyway. It's like, round 98 is one of them, obviously. Uh, in this case, not going to be used for round 95, because we can just glue strike for DTs, and all of our attacks do far more damage. Like, that's kind of why we have, like blue strike not as a means for our attacks to like be able to actually do damage against the DTs like our cannons and our machine gun but for us to be able to do more damage and this is not always going to be active these two things so that's why we need to have both this has a guaranteed way of being able to pop certain kinds of balloons and for this to be able to do additional damage for the uh, Churchill. Sorry, for Churchill, sorry, against the balloons here. I always like base skin Churchill over the other two. I love Santa one, obviously, but the uh, the second one is not for me, really. The future is never a great prospect to Shea Lee. You may never know what happens tomorrow. So in one of my other videos, I talked about like what would be one thing that you would want to have implemented into Balloon Tower Defense 6, but now I'm going to ask the opposite question. What's one thing that you would like for Ninja Kiwi to remove from the game? It could be a setting, it could be a particular feature on a tower, it could be anything really. And I'm not really too sure on what I would like to have removed from the game to, um, to change it up, because I feel like everything that is in the game kind of helps build up what makes the game so special in a way but i honestly would think in a way that having double cash removed from the game entirely would be uh beneficial because it means that everybody who does like boss runs like this is talking about myself as well actually like possibly no not removing double cash let me just change that back removing double cash as a feature for boss events so that everybody can play it on the same playing field like not in like boss challenge editor events but just like the boss events every week like this is again counterintuitive towards myself because i also use double cash because i don't know how to finance myself properly in order to do that and some of the restrictions are actually stupid i'm talking about you elite vortex on monkey meadow I'm talking about you, Elite Lich on Polyphemus. I also talk about Elite Lich on Haunted with no monkey knowledge. Like, like, there are so many stupid scenarios in boss events, which is like, I don't think I can possibly come up with a strategy in order to actually go through those scenarios. And people are like, well, just get better at the game. And it's like, you're talking about that from your perspective. Try translating that to a person who is not good as you who uses double cash in order to get through those scenarios. It's like, 
we all play the game for different reasons. Like some people play casually and others play it for expert reasons. I don't play boss events for expert reasons. I don't play ranked mode because I just find it too strenuous to come up with a strategy. And it always involves the same towers as well for like every tier. Like tier one, the tag zone. Tier two, mad. Tier three, apex plasma master. Tier four, like Ascended Shadow or something, and then tier 5, like Goliath Doomship, Ascended Shadow, Mages Perfectus, Navark of the Seas, like, or any other combination of OP meta towers. It's just the same thing, but how quickly can you do them, and what is the RNG factor to it? Because there's never going to be a, a scenario where there's not going to be such a thing as no RNG in the game. Like, for example, the uh, the critical hit when it comes to the crossbow, or sorry, the sharpshooter of the dart, uh, dart tower, or dart monkey, sorry, and the uh, middle path super monkey. Like, they have critical hit chances. But as far as I remember, they're not always going to be the same rate. It's kind of random. But it's just the scenario of that. It's like, I can see why, but then the other reasons, like, I don't want to feel like I would make a suggestion of something that could actually hurt the ecosystem of the game to where beginner players are too separated but also not where only the most sweatiest of sweat tryhards are um, are pleased thanks to certain changes in the game. Also that's the first time we used Moab Barrage in this scenario as well so it's really difficult actually and I feel like the, um, the people have the most difficult time when it comes to implementations of the game itself is obviously Ninja Kiwi because they don't want to make expert players feel uh, left out, but we don't want to have beginner players feel left out. ZOMG inbound, Glue Strike, and then the Moe Barrage for a little bit of extra damage with each shell falling on top of it. So we have a slowdown. Let's just use Glue Strike again while they're BFBs, do the extra damage. Once I go to Moaz for Glue Strike ability no longer is implemented on them, if the um, the parent balloon goes down to the child balloon. Kind of the same thing with Balloon Sabo. It doesn't work when a balloon has popped down to a smaller version of itself. Round 81 is done, and Churchill is now at level 12. Shells get additional increased damage and can explode six times. That's pretty awesome if you ask me. Let's wait for the Fortify BFEs to come out, then use the Moab Barrage, because it was always set to the strongest balloons by default. Which is actually something that, like, if you set to first, then you'll target the first most ones, but then it'll be like, the Moab Barrage is not getting the most out of its ability by uh, just targeting the first most. Oh, uh, Moab plus balloons! Okay, this is going to be a bit of a difficult one. There's always going to be, like, when I use the abilities. I think no matter what, at the end of the day, there's going to be some people who are incredibly displeased with a certain change in the game. And then there are people going to be pleased with that same change. But it's always going to be a difficult yin-yang sort of thing. A balance between pleasing expert players and pleasing beginner players. And all those who just play the game because they enjoy playing it regardless if they win or lose regardless if they have a like a, like a, a strategy that only works on the most um the easiest maps or strategies that work on the hardest of maps you have people like me but then you also have people like chon chon who are able to do the most insane scenarios on this game but for some people when they see that it's like every other person has to meet that kind of expectations or exceed it otherwise you're not worth even mentioning but some people have a complex when it comes to certain people on the internet and it's like well obviously they're the best at the game and everybody else has to meet those expectations otherwise they're bad at the game Moab Barrage on all of the BFBs. Although sometimes using it can be counterintuitive because of the amount of PS that we need to compensate for and also the attack, uh, the, uh, sorry, the movement speed at which we're going now. Sometimes it is too much for us to handle. Thank goodness for that. Thank 
goodness for that. Okay, let's use the Moab Barrage ability. Should have used it after the glue strike, but nonetheless, it's not going to make the difference here. And we should be able to get through this scenario very well here. Overclock is soon going to be Ultra Boost. We're only 3k away. And I'd just like to say, Churchill has performed incredibly well. Like, I expect to encounter many more, like, hurdles along the way here. Like, there have definitely been hurdles, like, some in the early rounds and one or two in the later rounds so far. But so far, Churchill is an absolutely brute to try and, um, well, for the bullions to try and escape. Obviously, one of the longest map in the game. Or, is this... I can never tell if Logs or Scrapyard is the longest map of the game. Well, this is definitely the longest map of the game when it comes to having access for a submarine or a buccaneer or for, um... Pat go floaty. Use them um, now on these fortified BFVs and use armor piercing so that we do more damage against the fortified balloons. Is this a new bonus? Hold on. I should like to look this up, actually. No, it just does extra damage to ceramics. Uh, let's see. Machine gun and main gun pop. Okay, all attacks do extra damage versus water by balloons on level 15. We should be able to get to level 16 by the end of this scenario. Good news, everyone. We now have Ultra Boost operational. And for some odd reason, the ability has moved from this spot over here to this spot over there. Very sus if you ask me. Not really, since it's just a little feature and doesn't break any comprehensive rules of the game. Except the fact that the blue is now slightly further to the, sorry, slightly closer to the middle of the map. Because of the amount of Moabs that spawn nowadays, getting the glue splatter is kind of important now. Because it's not just two Moabs or so per round or per, like, uh, bit of a road in which they are on. There's so many of them now. Let's keep using Ultra Boost as early as we can to get those stacks in. But once we get that times 10, then we will disperse our uses of it so we can get as much out of each usage as we can because we've only got three of them per round. Round 89. Just the BFBs, well, remnants left. Not the BFBs themselves left. And we should be good. In a uh, 2TT scenario, you want your armor piercing shells for the DDTs. But not in this case. Let us use the glue strike to do the bonus damage against the DDTs here. And round 91. Oh gosh. Yeah, all these fortified balloons could be a big issue here. We now got times 10 uses of the ultra boost. Yeah, you can only target up to 10 balloons. Sorry, 10 mobs at a time with a mob barrage. So that's kind of cool. Always targets the front most ones are the strongest ones. Rather than prioritizing the back or anything like that. If it's got some damage on it, then it still thinks it's the strongest. Oh, look at the amount of pierce that... <laughs> look at the amount of pierce that Churchill is, that has, actually. But like, it's going straight for all of those BFBs there. It just goes to show how good Churchill is, actually. Like, he is one of the most powerful heroes in the game. I'd still say that Adora is more powerful, especially for late game when paired with the true Sun God. But, for goodness sakes, Churchill is definitely up there with, like, Azili, Sai... Probably not quite as powerful as either Zidia Sai because <laughs> with one click of a button, Sai can just decimate an entire field of DDTs. I think Sai's silent scream ability does have a pierce cap, but it's just stupendously high. Let's go with Glue Storm now so that we can <laughs> not just have a little splat of glue. In oh, wait, but Glue Storm has now become number four. I suppose when you upgrade an ability, then it does move its position, but it's just rather bizarre. There goes round 94, and now it is round 95. What's going to happen on this round? So many DDTs that it's not fair whatsoever. It's just not fair, okay? Life's not fair! Armor-piercing rounds. <laughs> just look at the extreme massacation of all these balloons. I mean, massacre of these balloons. Okay, that sounded really weird there, but... 
you kind of get what I was trying to say. Mastication is not even a word. Okay, so now let's put down the final part of our setup here, and that is the balloon savers. Let's get both of them down. They're going to be along here where they can't pop any balloons at all. And, oh my god, I hope that's not come to bite me in the back, actually. Like, I think I placed... No, nah, I think I placed it slightly too far north. That's better. I just don't trust this game. <laughs> I don't trust it, okay? No more Ultra Boosts. I kind of rushed them, actually. Round 97. We might have a little bit of issue in this round. Considering the fact that these are, well, two ZMGs clumped into one ZMG body. But hopefully we'll be able to go through this scenario. Let's just use all that we have at our disposal. Like, it would be beneficial if we just get the extra damage against fortified balloons. But, nah, we're not going to do that, okay? We're going to do this the hard way. But not by not leveling up our hero, that takes the most amount of rounds to get to level 20. Although it also shares that type as well as the hero that takes the longest to level up. And there goes round 97. Excellent. Now then, round 98. Bonus damage against <laughs> Fortify Balloons. So let's see what kind of damage we can do on this round. And it's going to be a lot of damage. As you can tell, what is happening right now on the screen with everything that's going on, because of all our pierce that we have, we are certainly doing the damage. But can we continue doing the damage as time goes on? Now, that is a different question altogether. I'm just going to say this right now. <laughs> we are performing incredibly well. Churchill is an absolute powerhouse, like I said before. <laughs> and, like, I do repeat a lot of information, but that is also partially down to my physical dyspraxia. No, my mental dyspraxia, sorry. It's just retaining information sometimes can be really hard, and I do kind of repeat myself, but in a way, repetition does allow you to remember bits of information that you would easily forget otherwise. Like, if you say something multiple times, you're bound to remember it sooner or later. Engineer, ninja, ninja, no pops whatsoever, good. Now then, round 99, what are we going to do here? Fortify DDTs. Not going to use our Moab Barrage ability at all because of that we need it for the bad as soon as it comes around on round 100. Uh, but let's use Ultra Boost preemptively. And let's just, let's just allow these to do their thing, okay? There's no need to rush them, okay? Let's see. What in blazes is that? That's called a VAD, my friend. And that is going to be your ultimate prize, okie dokie. Oh, increase attack speed. Yes, please. We can't get call to arms, so leveling up Churchill to level 16 is the next best thing that we can do in this scenario. Using Balloon Savo at this given point in time is useless because the, <laughs> the Balloon Savo does not slow down the bat. <laughs> it just doesn't, okay? Try using it. It just doesn't. Let's see. Barrage ability again. We're going to hold out using the Ultra Boost until later on in the round. Come on, we should be... We're nearly there now when it comes to our potential of popping this thing. Remember, every single bit of damage needs to come from Churchill and his amazingness. We shall fight him in the swamps. We shall fight him in the snow. But most of all, we are not fighting them on the beaches. We are Churchill after all. Okay, barrage now... Do not allow them to escape our wrath at all. <laughs> Come on. We're nearly there now. And we didn't even need to use the other ones. <laughs> there we go, folks. So with a bigger amount of starting cash, you can make certain towers possible to get an all-pop scenario. But this is by no means an official scenario because of the fact that we had more money to start off with. Just keep that in mind. If you increase the starting cash, or even decrease it, but it's not an official scenario unless it's like half cash, and therefore you are limited to just a dark monkey and a tag shooter to start off your adventures with. Oh yeah, one thing I would remove from Blue Star Defense 6 actually is half cash mode. It's quarter of the fun. <laughs> 
So there we go, folks. All pops, Churchill chimps, 2160 start, which hopefully indicates that's the amount of money that you start off with. So thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of the video down in the comment sections below. Someone did suggest to me to try and do another 4TC scenario, but at the moment, and I've been covering for a colleague for a few weeks now when it comes to their Tuesday and Friday rolls, I am um, i don't really have a lot of time to try and come up with a scenario that would make like other things work. Like The only other thing that could be like beneficial or working for me is to just... Um, Let's say with Ray of Doom and, and the Anti-Balloon, let's just change up one or two of the towers used as well in order to make that work. But then there'll be like, you're just still using the Anti-Balloon and Ray of Doom to do the majority of the pops. It's like, you're not really innovating in a way. It's just too similar to another scenario. Just like the person who says that I should stop using the Ultra Boost in a two tower chimp scenario. I like Ultra Boost, okay? It's a very fun tower. Thank you all so much for watching, everybody. Let me know what you thought of the video down in the comment sections below. I'm always reading. I'm sometimes disappointed, but most of the time, I'm very happy to see what people have to offer. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, if you ever want to help me out in other means, rather than just liking, commenting, and subscribing, then please be sure to use my creator support code whenever you are purchasing anything from the store. I don't mention every video, and I always mention it at the end of the video because people who like to mention their merchandise and stuff in every single second of a video just kind of strip away from the actual intention of the video itself. But thank you all so much for watching and take care of yourselves, everybody.